Do you want to know just how consistent you are when you're hitting forehand and backhand from the baseline? Want to know how to measure your improvement as you work on those forehands and backhands? Well, in this video, I will show you exactly how to do both. Welcome to Cross Court Rabbit Complete Tennis. I'm your host, David Popeil, and my mission is to bring to you the most useful technical instruction, as well as the most engaging information about tennis generally, and thereby significantly raise both your level of play and your enjoyment of every aspect of the greatest of all games. So with this video, I will introduce what I call the ultimate consistency drill. First, giving credit where it is due, I learned the drill and several of the consistency tips that I'll feature in the following videos from the late master pro Ron Rebue. Ron lived on Long Island, he died several years ago, and he is sorely missed. And an important preliminary, don't worry about having to change your strokes in order to be more consistent. That may well be something else that you want to do for greater consistency, but the ultimate consistency drill and the tips that will follow do not require it. Consistency is simply the ability to keep the ball in play. I do not say simply dismissively, far from it. Simply keeping the ball in play is a powerful weapon. Just listen to what the great Arthur Ashe called his rule of five. Arthur said, for club players, you can read that as recreational players, I have a comfortable rule of thumb. If on every point you play, you hit the ball in five times, you are not going to lose any matches. If you hit the first five shots of the point in anywhere, you will win the match. So start with steadiness, then add aggression and power." End quote. The prominent tennis coach, Vic Braden, put it this way, keep all of your shots deep and in play and you will be famous by Friday. I put it this way, at any given level of the game, consistency is the most powerful weapon. Yes, the pros make spectacular shots, but the pros are better than we are, not simply because they hit spectacular shots, but because regardless of the level of difficulty at which they are executing, they can hit with far greater consistency than you and I can. So, here's how the drill goes. It's a two-person drill with each of you hitting ground strokes to the other. And there are targets. To lay out these targets, it helps to have four drop lines. On each side of the net lay two drop lines along the imaginary extension of the center service line to the baseline center mark. If you don't have drop lines and you're playing on a clay or clay-like court, you can draw a line with your racket. If you're on a hard court, you can lay down a string or just eye the boundary. We now have our targets. The area on each side of the net bounded by the service line on the deuce side, the adjacent singles sideline the baseline from the single sideline to the baseline center mark, and the extension of the center service line to the baseline. It looks like this. Begin by hitting cross court on the deuce side of the court, but initially only one of you is putting your consistency to the test. Let's say that that is you, in which case, your hitting partner feeds a ball to your forehand, I'll assume that you're a righty, so that the feed will go towards the target on the deuce side of the court. Your partner, however, is not aiming for that target or any 
target, except in the sense that he or she wants to keep the ball going cross court and close enough to you so that you can get to it without great effort. Remember, we want to work on the most fundamental and important level of consistency, the simple reduction of unforced errors and the consequent ability to keep the ball in play, not the ability to make difficult shots. Not only is your hitting partner not aiming for a target other than hitting cross court, he or she can choose to hit either forehands or backhands. You, however, are most definitely aiming for a target. You want to hit your forehand to the target area on the other side of the court. If you land your forehand in that target area, your partner returns the ball cross court and the two of you continue rallying in this manner. And as you rally, you count your number of consecutive target hits until you miss, at which point the rally ends. Your partner then feeds you another ball and the two of you start again with you resuming the count of your target hits from where it stopped on the first feed. Do this 10 times. When you're done, take your total number of target hits and divide by 10 to yield the average number of times you kept the ball in play on each feed. Then you become the feeder, your partner becomes the one aiming for the cross court target, and your partner now counts the number of times he or she hits the target on 10 feeds. When you've each done the drill hitting cross court to the other's forehand, presuming you're both righties, do the same drill for cross court backhands. The target areas will now be on the ad sides of the court. This is the most basic version of the ultimate consistency drill. It is also the most important because cross-court consistency is the most important ground stroke consistency. You doubtless know that when you hit cross-court, you're hitting over the lowest part of the net and you have more length of court to hit at. And you've no doubt seen that even the pros hit a high percentage of their ground strokes cross-court. This is the first of several videos devoted to consistency, and in subsequent videos, I'll show you a number of drills that will help you improve your ground stroke consistency. These drills will include variations of the ultimate consistency drill. For now, note one of the advantages of the drill. Both players are actively practicing. The feeder doesn't, ju doesn't just feed the balls to the hitter. The feeder, too, is practicing cross-court consistency. And there's no reason why the feeder, if he or she wants to, can't aim for the target area on the hitter's side, just as the hitter is aiming for the target area on the feeder's side. At this point, let me say something about these targets. They are huge. They cover an area of 243 square feet. That is a little more than 23% of the court on each side of the net. And actually, it's even more than that. This is a baseline ground stroke exercise. And when you're hitting regular ground strokes, not lobs, from the baseline, you can't make the ball bounce close to the other side of the net at least the first five feet of court on the other side of the net are inaccessible to you, likely much more. So, if you only count the area of the court beyond five feet from the net, the targets we've laid out are more than 26% of the court on the other side of the net. That's a lot. And it suggests that you ought to be able to hit the target whenever you want to especially since the person on the other side of the net is doing nothing more than hitting the ball back to you. And in fact, your goal should be 100 target hits on 10 feeds, an average of 10 target hits per.
per feed. By now, you may be saying to yourself, oh, come on, Coach Dave, this is too easy. The target is huge. 10 target hits per feed? Easy. I can do that and better. This drill will go on forever. And you're half right. Yes, the target is huge, as I've said, but I can virtually guarantee that if you are a recreational player, this drill will not go on forever. My guess is that it will end quickly. The great majority of recreational players will total no more than 35 or 40 target hits on 10 feeds. That's right, 35 or 40. That's three and a half or four consecutive target hits on average per ball before you miss. If you exceed my expectations and get to even 60 target hits, you're doing quite well. Of course, I could be wrong. So let's see. Arrange to do the test with a tennis friend. See how you make out. Let me know in the comments section below. If you do much better than I expect, I will accept your condemnations. I'm not proud and I'll be glad for you. But if, as I suspect will be true for most of you, you fall within the range I anticipate, continue with the immediately following videos and I'll show you what I call the laws of consistency. These laws are the means by which you can improve your consistency without changing your strokes. And if you exceed my expectations, even if you exceed them by quite a bit, you may want to continue anyway. After all, you may well increase your already estimable level of consistency. In any event, from time to time, test yourself with the ultimate consistency drill and see how your scores improve. Indeed, that is the point of the drill. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helps. To my left and right are links to the videos that introduce the first and second laws of consistency. Please consider clicking the like button below and the subscription button as well. And finally, keep playing the greatest of all games, and I'll see you again soon.